Hello everyone, my name is Walid and I'm a PhD student and a Google developer expert in Earth Engine. So I have started a series of uh, tutorials and workshops on Earth Engine and this one is the first tutorial on the use of Earth Engine and Sentinel-1 dataset for generating box plots of uh, Sentinel-1 backscatter for different land use land cover classes. So the original idea for this project and code was from Ujwal Gandhi's recent work uh, which he used Sentinel-2 dataset for generating um, the charts for different land use land cover classes. So I modified the code uh, for the Sentinel-1 use case and uh, this these are the codes i will explain in the step by step that how you can use and modify the code for your own research so overall the code is divided into five sections the first section focuses on inputs of the code so in the inputs we have uh, area of interest and then a start and end date which you can modify and hopefully the code will work for your given inputs uh, next, I have some optional um, inputs, like if you want to change the maximum and minimum limit of the charts. Uh, in most of the cases, the range will be slightly above or below the prescribed uh, range. So you can change it right here. And if you want to change the uh, orbital properties of Sentinel-1, you can just uh, input descending or ascending. So for the next or second part, we have to filter the image collection. So as mentioned earlier, I have used Sentinel-1 and based on our inputs, I have filtered the image collections. Um, specifically, I have taken the images for the first 2000 to 2001 single year and filter it for my study area, which is by the way, same as of Ujwal Gandhi's work. And just for the visualization purpose, I have also created a composite, which uh, I can show you later how we can visualize it. So in the third part, um, just like the Sentinel-1, I have used a land use land cover data set and have filtered it. Now, if you have your own land use land cover data set, you can directly input right here, uh, but make sure that it's an image instead of an image collection because the word cover takes a single image so as you can see it's an image collection and we are taking the first image so it's created as the image next um, it's the remap to change the values of uh, the existing land use land cover into a simplified 0 to 10 uh, classes and then um, there is a list of names of land use land cover classes and uh, its colors in the fourth section, we have uh, prepared our, in, uh, previously we have prepared our Sentinel-1 uh, time series, we have prepared word cover, we have uh, land use land cover data, and we have our inputs. So in the fourth section, what we do is we generate uh, samples through random sam a stratified sampling approach, and then we use those samples to get the values of land use land cover and the respective Sentinel-1 data. So here you can see the code for the stratified sampling is much more similar to the machine learning approach that uh, we use a similar approach to generate training sample in the machine learning um, code. And here uh, we have two inputs, the number of points, which uh, represent how many points we want to generate for each land use land cover class and the scale. Since we are working with the Sentinel-1 and it has a spatial resolution of 10 meters, so we are going with the 10. And next we have to generate the statistics. Now, in Earth Engine, there is no predefined way of uh, generating a box plot. This means we have to manually create statistics and then manually create the chart. So first for the statistics, uh, to generate the box plot, we need the uh, common statistics like minimum, maximum, median, and the percentiles like 25 or 75th percentile values. So by using the reducers, we can calculate all of these statistics. So the fourth section is mostly on generating samples and then calculating statistics for each of the sample. 
So after we have generated samples and we have collected the statistics for each of the sample, we have to convert the sample into a future collection. So these lines of code converts our existing data for each point and reformat it so it will be later used to visualize a box plot. Uh, in the last section, the fifth section, we will create a function that will generate a chart, uh, specifically a single chart. Uh, and then we will use the loop to generate chart one by one. So overall, um, I will run it. When you run the code using your inputs, you will not only visualize the land use land cover, the sample, the composite, but also you will get the back box plot for each of the Sentinel-1 using both VV and VH band. So overall, if you observe the box plot, the tree cover has relatively high backscatter similar to grassland, shrubland, and buildup has very high backscatter. And lastly, the water. The water class has relatively very low backscatter values, which provide an efficient way of mapping water, specifically if you are using it for floods or other use cases, it just suits better compared to the spectral uh, Sentinel-1 or Landsat data sets. So in this tutorial, we have learned that how we can use a Sentinel-1 backscatter data uh, for VV and VH band. Uh, along with the word covered land use land cover to generate box plot which shows the variations in the backscatter values for each land use land cover class. Um, besides this code, I have also created a blog which you can find in the description and see you in the next tutorial.